Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So after India had won the first test match against Bangladesh and they were up 1-0, now the second test match was played at the Sheri Bangla National Stadium in Dhaka. And yes, first things first, I mean it was really a surprising decision because the player of the match in the first test match, Kuldeep Yadav, was dropped he was benched just because there was some green tinge on the pitch and india opted to go for three seamers but i feel it was a bizarre decision from the indian test captain kl rahul and also the indian team management because when a player is at his best he's at his prime he has just picked up the player of the match picked up eight wickets in the previous game and you just don't drop a player just like that. But anyways, so at the toss, Shakib Al Hassan won the toss and Bangladesh had decided to have a back first. And yes, in this game, it was Jaydev Bunatkar who was making a comeback to the Indian Test team after a gap of 12 years, would you imagine guys? And that too, at the back of his fantastic domestic performances in the recent times, finally he got to play his second test match after a gap of 12 years. So Indians started with their three seamers, Umesh Yadav, Mohamed Siraj and Jaydev Munadkar and they bowled really well up front and they did not let Bangladeshi openers off to a flyer. So the wickets kept on falling at regular intervals with some beautiful bowling, seam and swing bowling by the Indian Pacers. But then it was Mominul Hawk who really held one end up and he scored a brilliant knock of 80 odd runs that helped Bangladesh score a total of 227 runs in the first innings. Thanks to some brilliant bowling performances with Ravi Chandran Ashwin picking up four wickets, Umesh Yadav picked up four wickets and then the comeback man Jede Bunakar, he picked up two wickets. So India started with their openers KL Rahul and Shubman Gill and once again a disappointing innings from the Indian test skipper KL Rahul as he went out for just 10 runs. After that, it was Cheteshwar Pujara who joined hands with Shubhan Gill and they both tried to steady the ship but then they lost both the wickets in the run of play. And Virat Kohli, he also got a start but could not con consolidate his innings and India was suddenly reduced to 94 for 4. And then it was Shreya Sire who joined hands with Richard Pan and they started building the partnership playing caution with aggression and Rishabh Pan, he was scoring the occasional boundaries with his unorthodox shots and then slowly the partnership swelled up to 100 runs and eventually Rishabh Pan and Shreya Sire staged a brilliant partnership of 159 runs before Rishabh Pan falling short of his well-deserved century by just Seven runs. And then once Punt went out, it was Shreya Sire who tried to go on with the march, but then he also went out after scoring a brilliant knock of 87 runs and then some lower order contributions as well as India folded for 314 runs in the first innings, taking a lead of valuable 87 runs. And that's because the pitch was really deteriorating. There was some uneven bounce and there was a lot of help for the spinners as well. Bangladesh were trailing by 87 runs and they started with their openers, Shanto and Zakir Hassan. But then the Indian bowlers started bowling really well in partnerships and Bangladesh were suddenly reduced to 70 for 4 wickets and then things were looking really bleak for Bangladesh because the deficit was still 17 runs and Bangladesh had 6 wickets in hand. And yes, Zaki Hassan, he held one end up and yet again he scored a brilliant half century for Bangladesh in the second innings before losing his wicket 
after scoring 51 runs. It was Litton Das who then brightened up the all the Bangladeshi supporters with a counter attacking innings with Nurul Hassan and Nurul Hassan. I mean, 31 run knock and that partnership with Litton Das. It was a breathtaking partnership and all the Indian bowlers were stunned by the counter-attack which was shown by the Bangladeshi batsmen. Litton Das scored an invaluable knock of 73 runs and yes, not to forget Tusky Nemitz's 31 run knock as well that ensured that Bangladesh gives India a total of 145 runs to be chased in the fourth innings and tattoo on a tricky dhaka pitch in the Sheri Bangla Stadium. Aksar Patel was the pick of the bowlers picking up three wickets and Ravi Chandra Nashwin, he picked up two wickets along with Mohammed Siraj. So chasing a total of 145 runs for victory in the second test match, the Indian openers needed to get off to a good start but then once again KL Rahul had been a disappointment throughout this Bangladesh tour. I mean, string of low scores, I don't know how the management is deciding and giving him the role for captaincy. And then Shubman Gill, Virat Kohli, Chiteshwar Pujara, Rishabh Pan all lost their wickets for single digit and Bangladeshi spinners Shakib Al Hassan and Mehdi Hassan Biraj they were on fire in the Dhaka pitch. I mean, it was like a minefield which ball would turn, which ball would grip and bounce, which one would straighten up. No one could ever predict. And then India had promoted Aksar Patel up the order with the night watchman Jaydev Bunatkar, and they both finished the day three comfortably. And as soon as day four started, it was once again Mehdi Hassan Miraj who took three quick wickets and India were on the mat as they were reduced to 74 for 7 and thanks to Aksar Patel because if not for his 34 runs India would have been like 40 odd runs for 7 wickets and after that it was Shreya Sayer who came into bat at number 8 along with Ravi Chandran Ashwin and they played really cautiously playing every single ball to merit. He, they were respecting all the Bangladeshi spinners, but yes, they scored the occasional boundaries as well. The running between the wickets was really good between Ravi Chandran Ashwin and Shreya Sire. And yes, once they went close to the target, then Shreya Sire broke open and he scored three quick boundaries to put India back on the run chase. And then it was Ravi Chandra Nashwin who gave the finishing touches with a 16 run over against Mehdi Hassan Miraj, their best Bangladeshi bowler of the second innings, picking up five wickets. But then it was that 70 odd run partnership between Shreya Sire and Ravi Chandra Nashwin which eventually sealed the deal for India. I mean, Shreya Sire, he could have scored just 29 runs. But then the temperament which he had shown, the pressure which he absorbed during that phase of play was phenomenal. And Ravi Chandran Ashwin, he is always a big match player. I mean, taking pressure, he is absorbing it quite well and scored a valuable knock of 42 odd runs. And eventually, India won the second test match by just three wickets. Let's take a look at the scorecard. And coming to the player of the match, no surprises for his match winning knock of 42 odd runs and picking up 6 wickets throughout the game, it had to be Ravi Chandran Ashwin. And yes, not to forget, he completed a double of 3000 test runs and then he scalped 447 wickets and now he's just behind Richard Hadley and he's in the list of the all time great all-rounders in test matches. Well done Ravi Ashwin. After 47 months, we had seen Cheteshwar Pujara score a century in test matches and rightly so, he was declared the player of the series for this tour. And now, 
with the series wrapped up 2-0 and this two wins were very important in the context to the race to the finals of the WTC 2023. I think India are looking really good to reach the finals but yes their final frontier will be when Australia will be visiting India for that full match test series in India next year and out of those four India definitely needs to win three of them to secure a place in the world test championship final next year so that's it for now thanks for your time thanks for watching